And now for the, for, for the panel, so I'd like to uh, uh, first ask all of you to introduce yourselves. And uh, again, mainly your, uh, I think everyone here would like to hear your experience with sales development, first and foremost. So, Patrick? Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Patrick Hudgens. I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Delegate. We provide Salesforce administration as a service to venture-backed companies looking to build their internal go-to-market systems. Uh, my background is in sales and sales management. Um, companies like TalkDesk, uh, uh, Figure Eight, um, which is an AI company as well, uh, helped build the sales development team there. So excited to bring what I can to this conversation. Awesome, Michelle. Hi, thanks. You're coming from far. Yes, uh, Michelle Hobbs, Senior Director of Sales Development at uh, Pendo, a sales experience uh, platform software based uh, in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. We do have a presence here in San Francisco, but myself and several of my uh, leadership team came out from Raleigh. Um, been in sales development inside sales specifically for the last 10 years, um, building out teams at BMC, Channel Advisor, and now at Pendo. Been there just over two years uh, came in with a team of 20. We're now over 40 and driving to 60 next year with the growth of the company. So we've been experiencing a lot of change in our organization. Hey guys, I'm Buck Henry. Uh, I work at Intercom, which is a live chat, chatbot, customer messaging products and platform. Um, my background in sales development was I managed our sales development team for about a year. I currently work with our AEs uh, in the small and medium business segment. Uh, looking forward to speaking to you guys today. Perfect. So, so the goal really is, uh, you know, AI is a very broad term, and the goal is to leave you with some guidance, uh, walk you through, you know, the thought process that this panel here and I have when we were looking into different uh, AI-based solution in the sales development, specifically, uh, you know, the pros, the cons, what do you need to take into consideration when you're looking into specific solutions? Again, we're not here to promote specific vendor, a specific solution, but, you know, types of solution and what you should be, you know, be cautious about or what you should look in or, you know, the different types of, of, of solutions. Um, so, and, and I really encourage you, I mean, at the end, if you have questions for, for this forum, we'll try to, to leave some time for, for that because I'm sure they, you know, can share from their experience and you can benefit from that. Um, the first, you know, most obvious one is, uh, you know, from your experience, um, if you could give examples, again, not necessarily specific vendors, but the type of solutions that, you know, really helped you or your other colleagues in terms of you know AI solution that really helps sell development, really help prospecting. So if you can share a few of, of those examples. Yeah, I think um, uh, all of us think in terms of funnels, in terms of pipeline funnels. Um, and if you think of the kind of the top of the funnel, the beginning of the funnel, for me, AI has like the most immediate application towards helping you understand which accounts you should go after, especially if you have a really large TAM. Um, account prioritization, for prospecting, outbound prospecting, um, targeting who 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 you should be going after, who your rep should be spending their time after, that's like number number one in my mind. In my mind, um, there's more solutions that are geared towards um, you know, like the, the content of the emails and the content of the prospecting. But like the one that's the AI that's most baked in my mind is the absolute top of funnel and account selection and, and prioritization. Does this go uh, beyond just you know the account selection, account selection, like uh, anything on in, on the prospecting side of specific you know contacts, people within the account? Okay, you find the right account, help with the prioritization intent, etc. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And and if you can get if you can start getting like uh, you know it's first off, it's like who should we be talking to on an account level, and then it's who on the on the contact level or the lead lead level, depending on how your team operates, and who's changed like job change. Job changes are crazy. That that amount of data is pretty crazy. So keeping that data fresh or building a system to keep that data fresh. And I'm not going to mention any vendors, but there are some tools out there. Um, that's like first and foremost in my mind to like application on how AI can help take lookalike data from your existing client base, people you've already sold to successfully and, and go out in the market and help your team prioritize. Awesome. So, yeah, I was just going to add to that, Patrick. The um... Um, pulling in not only their engagement with your own content, your own website, but third-party engagement using the, the topics that uh, you're targeting it within your space um, and helping prioritize not only the accounts, but the individual contact with talking points and suggested talking points based on how they've engaged with your content across you know, the marketing um, framework, as well as um, what 
the AI is seeing them engage with across um, the entire web. I'd also add to, as you think of you know, going down that funnel, you were talking about accounts, talking about people within those accounts, content within those accounts. We all know on a content level, there are certainly services out there that do help you write that content. One thing that we did at Intercom is we actually built a tool that would superimpose our chat widget on somebody's website. Um, it would have something pre-recorded and it would actually automatically add that couple second video clip into a sales loft or outreach or you know, we're using those pretty interchangeably cadence. Um, and all, you know, it was about 90% personal or automated. And then there's 10% of personalization, some audio track that we put over top of it. So really grab the customer's attention. You have one chance when you're prospecting to really grab someone's attention. And so hyper personalization at scale in that automation realm is something that we've seen been really successful. I, I think you touched your uh, an interesting point because you said like it you know it's ninety percent automated and the AI can do a lot of that work, but then there is you know a ten percent, and I think this is applicable for a lot of the, of the processes. I mean, yes, you could use a lot of things to automate and make sure that you know, it takes a lot off the you know the plate of the SDR, but still leaving you know specifics and and you know to to the SDR to do this extra last you know mile off personalization or last verification that this is the right person or this is the right account, et cetera. So it's still saving a lot of time and helping you, but not like re basically removing the risk of, of doing something that is completely automated, that you can completely trust the machine. And, and that's really you know, my, my next question. I know that when we prep for this, you, you had a lot of examples and we're not <laughs> going to say specific vendors, but we all had our, you know, so bad experiences, right, with trying to adopt solutions. So, but if you can give example at the high level of like, where are the risks really of, 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 you know, where it could, you know, could hurt the performance, where it could uh, um, have a negative impact using, you know, AI based solutions. Yeah, and if I'm in the audience, I for sure want us to say vendors, but we're not gonna say vendors. <laughs> um, but I think uh, anytime that you're responding with uh, content in a bot format, like a client has asked a question and, and all of a sudden it's a chat bot that you've turned in, you've brought into the email response side of the house, um, you, you're running a risk. You're playing, you're playing with a game with your client base. And if you have a massive TAM and lots of volume, maybe that risk is, is worth it. But you, if, if you have a, a known universe of clients you're going after with a, a tight TAM, like let's say you're like only going after Fortune 500, for example, you probably don't want to introduce bots into your email cadence because the, the risk is uh, you, your SDRs end up looking, looking like idiots, like they're, like they're just responding in, in kind. And like that reflects on your brand that can tank your brand really early. So I, that, that, would, that would be like first and foremost. And then the last thing is like anything that's like auto, like for me, video auto AI generation is still very in that realm of um, uh, if, if your client can tell that it's, that it, that it's fake, you're, you're, it's going to hurt your brand. Uh, at the end of the day, not just like not getting the meeting, but but hurt your brain. And it can be a bit creepy too. Yes, I've seen some of these. <laughs> they can be a bit creepy. Um, I think there's a there's a number of things. Um, first, um, with regards to the context of it, it within an email, the content of it, there can be um, misinterpretation um, of the language being used or the words being used, and that directs then the the response incorrectly. Yeah. Right. So if you're relying on that automation to respond, and someone says. I'm not available, then they use that word, but, right? Um, that um, is not always detected, um, how, how somebody constructs the, their response. Um, so that can lead to, to, to negative um, uh, uh, experience for the, for the prospect. Um, I think also in the time that we've seen in the last 18 months, um, AI and, and its predictive nature um, falls um, it fails us when people are no longer at the office and it's raining in Atlanta, so they're not going out for lunch. So you might be able to get them on the phone. They're at home and they're not, they're going into their kitchen to make a sandwich. Um, and, and so it, it's not as responsive as we need it to be in times of, of change that we've seen. And I think the last um, point I would make in this area is it can be overwhelming for the individual SDR. It's a lot of data coming their way. Um, and um, trying to discern the signals that they're seeing, that they're hearing, uh, the information that's being put in front of them, and being able to pull it all into um, a single pane of glass for them to, to come in every day and work from can be very challenging. And I'll, I'll just add one little piece, uh, kind of on Patrick's point. It, it is dependent on your total addressable market, but um, 
automate the easy stuff, the small stuff, the stuff that gives you a little bit of time back in your day to do that really unique prospecting. I think that's like, you know, if you want to start small, that's probably the best thing to do. Answering the easy questions like, hey, how can I get a demo? Hey, um, you know, what is your pricing? Stuff like that that you do think you can answer from a frequently asked question perspective. Give the customer an immediate answer. Give them the opportunity to automatically book time in your calendar, like whatever that case is. Let the easy stuff come. Don't spend any time on that so you can spend time. Because you can have time, time is finite. That's one of your most valuable resources as a rep. Um, get some time back on your calendar so you can actually do some needle moving stuff. I, I think I, I want to, you know, if I, if I want to sum this up to some extent, like I, I think if you categorize it into two, and we spoke about it a bit before, like if it's something that doesn't have an immediate touch, you know, immediately touch your prospects, you know, prioritization, uh, prospecting, research, intent. Uh, all those, I mean, that are actually helping the, the SDRs, I mean, there's, you know, really low risk to it. Okay, so you, you know, it's your time and your budget and everything, but eventually you try the solution and worst case, it gives you, you know, bad recommendation, but it's nothing extremely bad happened. But as Patrick said earlier on, and you mentioned, you know, the videos, which are great solutions, but, you know, if you take it to the extreme and you're actually going into the, the content, I think, I'm not saying like we shouldn't be using AI-based solution for content. We just need to be more cautious with, with what we do, especially of trying to really personalize. Like AI could really, I, I, I put the line between customization and personalization. AI can really customize. So it can learn that this is this persona in this industry and the best content is of that type. But if you really try to write something from scratch on the fly, or a video from scratch on the fly that you know a machine built to send an email or a LinkedIn connect, this is where you're getting to the risky part. I'm not saying we're not going to get there, but in today's solutions and what we see today in the market, it's, this is the risky part that you should really uh, seriously consider uh, be, be, before, you, before you take. Um, another, you know, and then that brings me to, to another thing, and, and uh, um, Buck, Buck really said something along those lines of you know, automation. And, People are thinking about AI and machine learning and they put it all under one roof, but it's really two types in general, not just for SDRs of, of solutions. There's you know, automation related, which is basically let's take a machine, let's let it learn from what humans are doing well, and let the machine try to replicate that and automate that and you know, all the lookalikes that you mentioned, et cetera. And the other type really is, you know, for lack of a better word, let's not learn from humans let's take the process that people do and and let mach machines could analyze and optimize many more parameters than what human could possibly do and over there these are solution you know that are autonomous solutions right that they're actually making decisions uh better than than human and it's not in sales i'll get to the sales but you know if you think about marketing if you think about advertising all the solutions are like the latter. I mean, no human is making decision in Facebook or LinkedIn or Google, which ad is going to show up to whom and when and what hour and what type, et cetera. It's all, you know, machine-based, 100%. Not saying it's not annoying sometimes for us as consumers, but that, that's the case because there's no way that the marketeer can sit and make those decisions. So um, with that, you know, Promo, I'd like to really hear your opinion, like in what areas in what parts of let's go back to you know sales development what parts of the sales development work would you take the first right the automation concept of saying let's just you know replicate what humans do well versus parts that you say well if you just take what sdr is doing today and just do it automatically you're not gonna earn a lot so yeah i i think it's um you, you, he told me he was going to ask this question. This is a tough one of like which which direction to start from. I think I, I think uh, your optimal SDR experience should be more like uh, uh, Iron Man's suit, where the SDR is more functional or has larger functionality. From it's it's not like a complete replacement. It's not a robot like one to one replacement. Um, on like what should you learn from machine? What should machines learn on their own? And what should you be, you kind of uh, dictate towards them? I think. Um, Machines should definitely learn like account prioritization, like where to start with, who to be reaching out to, and those those like market signals, like top of funnel stuff. I think is really low hanging fruit for this industry and and easy to apply. I, I would add coming down the funnel, the progression through the funnel, and what's the best path through that to get them to that you know to pipeline. 
because that's what we're all driving towards. Um, so is there a more, uh, you know, of the multiple paths that we could choose from and what we present to the prospect at any given time, um, what's the best path um, for the, the, the quickest conversion to, to an opportunity for where that person is in the funnel? So you, I mean, it's, all, it's for all of you really the question, how much would you trust really, you know, it's, it's basically optimization, right? I mean, where in the path, I mean, what should be the next step? What should be, you know, who should we go after? Should we stop? Should we continue, et cetera? SDR teams are doing it all day long, right? I mean, you're looking at the dashboard, you're looking at results, you're looking at the playbook, um, you know, what's your take? I mean, is it, I mean, today it's not 100% feasible, but is that a direction of saying, yeah, I mean, the optimization of, What's the best content? What's the best step? You know, A/B test, but not a, not a person makes this call, but you know, a machine makes this call of what's next. Is that is that the path to go? I would I would say trust your data. In, invest in something that's going to help you aggregate the data and make decisions based on that data. But trust your data, um, and then trust a human to analyze the data. Trust the machine. Well, trust a human to oversee the machine. Analyzing okay. the data, but but go with the machine's recommendation. And if you know if, if you go down that path, and two weeks, you know, a couple months later, you realize that's not the right path, then reevaluate. But um, there are these very very complex algorithms that will look at all sorts of scoring and will will show you the best best recommended path forward. Um, and I would say trust that because there is that recency bias with humans. Like, you know, hey, I got this guy on lunch at, you know, at lunch on a Tuesday. We should all send our cadences on a Tuesday or run our call step on a Tuesday. So that's one thing we want to make sure that or that's one thing that a machine avoids. Yeah. yeah. It most certainly removes that emotional element. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, SDRs experience that we'll ha you know, have them try something new. They do it for two days. They don't see results. They're ready to bail on it and do something different um, without really pushing through what the analytics, are, you know, are telling us would, would work best. But that's an that's an interesting point because I think um, if your company is on the smaller side or on the younger side, you probably don't have that great of data to work from. Like right. they're they're both coming from pretty well established brands, Pendo and, and Intercom. They have good data to work from and make decisions based off of. And that's if you're going to build AI models or you're going to you know build AI in your process, you do need good data for that to to take judgment from. Otherwise, it's just going to be used industry best practices. And industry best practices are. It's like a, um, a, it's a good side of it and a bad side of it. The bad side of it is like it's not that best practice may be the worst practice for your business. Yeah, and and best practices are are like I call it optimization to an average, right? There's an average saying you know <coughs> Tuesday morning or better, or whatever it is, but it, they don't take into consideration each and every single you know target prospect or target account or industry that that you're working with. And and as Mr. Michelle said, I mean, I mean, you know, AI has no. I, I say that AI has no sentiments, right? I mean, they don't mm -hmm. have this bias. So, well, I'm biased because I honestly believe that this is the path <laughs> to take. But, but I, I really think that there is great advantages when it comes specifically to the optimization piece. If you, as you said, if you have great data and your own experience and thousands or tens of thousands of data points of your audience, great. But if you're a smaller team, then I think learning from models that were already trained and machines that already kind of know how to look at your playbook and, and optimize things. I mean, uh, uh, Reggie was, was here, obviously, taking it on a different aspect of the, of, of the content specifically. Uh, I think it's extremely valuable, especially as you, as you start your motion in sales development and you build your team and, and, and you go into that. Um, last topic, really, and then we'll open up for, for, for questions. Um, you, you know, we intentionally had different, not, not all like uh, as current SDR leaders in, in the panel today. Um, so, you know, there's different uh, people involved, obviously, in persona in the sales organization. There's the uh, SDR leader, there, there are SDRs themselves, there's the sales ops, uh, which you kind of uh, represent because you're providing uh, companies with sales ops uh, to some extent, you know, services. Uh, there's a uh, back move from, from, SDR to, to the account executive side, which obviously care about you know, something else. So the question really is, you know, there's different KPIs. And although we all work for the same goal, um, we each have you know, different goals and success criteria for our own team. And from your perspective, and also looking for the next you know, two years, if you look at the most, the highest priority for, you know, for sales, for SDR leader, for uh, for the sales team, 
uh, what would you like to see or where would you say that this person should be focusing their effort when it comes to technology solution and AI solutions? I mean, in what areas and what would they care about the most? And by the way, the reason I'm asking this in, in SDR conference is really because you're working with others that are not, you are the SDR leader, but you're working with those others. So you need to keep this in mind as you bring into, as you bring new solution uh, into account. Yep. I think uh, from, an, from a sales ops perspective, one thing that uh, I don't see small companies doing enough is helping, helping their SDR teams understand where to start, where to start in their account, where to start with like their data, like giving them tools to understand their world, which accounts to go after to shrink so they're not boiling the ocean. It seems like table stakes for pretty for pretty well established companies, but it is. But it's like top twenty percent of uh, ops leaders are actually doing that. So if you're if you if your team is not doing that today, go home and talk to your ops leader and say how do we how do we better slice the ocean for these SDRs to know where to start, especially if you have a really large TAM. If you're like a DocuSign with a big TAM, you can sell to anybody in theory. Like that's the first place to start. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think um, we spoke about this last night. I think about this from a sales development leader perspective and, and coming into forecast calls and, and not forecasting the, the, the deals that are closing, but forecasting pipeline, where we're at today, where we expect to be and where we're going to start the next quarter from our day one pipe perspective. And um, there are times that I walk in and I feel like I'm just kind of rolling the dice there with like what I see from activities. Joe was talking about it earlier in the model. You know, we base a lot of our numbers off of the activities and the conversion of those activities to meetings, meetings to opportunities, and we build data and we can rely on that. Um, but it would sure be helpful um, using AI to see further down the road and be able to uh, manage the business, the resources, the, the, the um, accounts that we're going after and understand what is, is coming up and respond to that versus reacting to it. So get in front of it and be proactive versus being reactive to like, hey, we didn't get enough SQOs that we thought we were last week. You know, what are we doing about it this week? And it's just too short-sighted from an operational perspective within the sales development organization. Yeah, I, I think we see it with sales development team all the time. Like at the end of the month or the end of the quarter, they know. And they know that this, you know, this rep was, you know, got a territory that was too small or that account list or new source was completely off or our you know new playbook or new set of, of emails that we started using or the new channel that we decided to go with LinkedIn uh, Connect didn't work. But you know it after a month and that's sometimes too late. Like, okay, now I missed my goal and then you know your goals are basically the foundations for the rest of the funnel for the whole company, right? For the whole sales funnel. So, and not enough meetings, not enough opportunities. Now you're in a big problem. And I think, um, you know, reporting comes in in outreach and sales often others and, and also, you know, obviously in our product and many others. But I think we as, you know, AI vendors, right, to trying to help sales development teams, we really see that and we really try to close this gap and try to use what we learned to have those alerts soon enough. And not just saying, okay, this person didn't do enough activities, but just mm -hmm. like predict of this is not going to have enough meaning. This source is not going to work. This account list is not going to work. Your playbook is at risk early enough, like within a week and not within a month. And that's, you know, that's a, a, a big change. Until you adopt that, the bare minimum that I would recommend is like trying to sit with your BI team. I mean, trying to mm -hmm. sit with your BI team. And trying to create predictions, I mean, it's some custom work that you might need to do, but I personally think, and I don't know what's your opinion on that, but that, that it's worth it because then you get more visibility than the off-the-shelf products that you have today. What's your thought from, a, from sales AE? Yeah, so from a, like a sales leadership perspective, everything that you guys mentioned really does drive the ultimate goal of driving more revenue for the business. Uh, the pipeline that the SDRs are generating goes to AEs that then close. The target uh, assessment, understanding your target market, prioritizing the target market, gets the, AE, the SDRs in front of the right um, individuals to then pass over to AEs to then close. So all of the goals here are aligned, I think, in a way. Um, from a sales leadership perspective, it really comes to working closest to the dollar. So I'll get a little bit more granular here. We talked about this earlier um, in terms of specific prospect targeting. So you nail down your account list, you prioritize that, 
And then prioritizing the, the highest propensity to respond, highest propensity to buy target personas within that account list really does tee up the AEs that you'll be passing deals to as an SDR to really succeed, uh, shortens deal cycles. Um, you know, we will see situations where there'll be less multi-threading because we're talking to the right context at the right time. The economic, the economic buyers in the room right off the bat, which I think is really important. So I'd love to see, you know, like AI continue to get really strong here. Like, and very, very clearly, like we're in the beginning days of actual pure machine learning, natural language processing, AI actually having a, a really strong impact on the content that SDRs are sending. And we've seen some companies out there who are using some stuff like that, but like this is this is very early. So I'd love to see like those algorithms, those models, best practices across different verticals, different industries, really start sharing data. And I think in the next couple of years, like that's going to be a really, really interesting um, kind of convergence of of knowledge for um, all businesses and, and all SDR works. Awesome. Um, so we have a few minutes left. Um, any you know questions that you have for this great forum? Yes, please. What's my expertise? Go ahead. All right, so this may seem a little controversy, so uh, controversial. But um, you mentioned about building processes that are AI-led, 90% of it leveraging you know, the technology and then 10% having personalization. My question is, is the 10% worth it for the SDR to still be relevant? I think you need smarter SDRs. That's what it, that's what it comes down to. You're going to build people that are more systems and process oriented and more deep in the technology. If you're thinking about applying, like adding AI into your process, talk to the vendors, but really vet them. Like ask them to teach you and understand like where 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 are things happening and why. You know, we're rightbound customers. They're great, but if you talk to their team, get in the weeds with them. If you talk to Reg AI, how is it working? What like so that you understand at a, at a deep level? Okay, here's the here's the strengths and weaknesses of this tool and this technology, and how it's going to help me and my team. And that way, you can go go back and teach your team of like, okay, here's the strengths, here's the weaknesses, here's where it might fail. And I think uh, there's there's no easy easier direct way. There's no flip on switch. I think uh, I mean I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's not like John Henry versus the machine. I think it's more like Iron Man in terms of what the future of SDR looks like. Yeah. I, I think it's totally worth the, the, the time. I think that if, you know, sales leadership that think, you know, that meetings are going to fall off the sky with some magical AI solution that's going to take 100%, it's not going to happen. And again, we're selling AI solution. We are telling all our customers, like, you know, they're either about personalized follow-up or sometimes a personalized first touch for the strategic account or, you know, obviously calling it. There's parts of, of you know, SDR work that will, I don't foresee it. Maybe not never, no one knows when, but anytime soon that, you know, machine would completely replace. So yes, I, I think that 10%, sometimes it's 30% is really worth it uh, to, to do, uh, to take the SDR time. Other questions? Uh, I have a comment actually, and uh, would love to get your perspective as well. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> online, the online people. I know you do. Um, so quick comment and would love to get your perspective as well. So one thing is about 10% person personalization, but even outside of that, like if you think of any task that someone does, um, some of you were worried that, oh, what if AI sends an email automatically and the customer sees it and that's a high risk um, endeavor essentially. Um, but if I look at the evolution of AI, one of the things that... Um, is interesting to me is what fraction gets automated. So not so much personalization, but what fraction of the tasks start getting automated. So for example, Google search is probably the best example. It's gotten scary good at how to autocomplete Google search yeah. to the point where people think that it's listening to your phones, right? That's how good it is. Uh, and it, Google is definitely not listening to your phones, but, um, and that keeps getting pushed, right? Like you can imagine Intercom as an example where it starts auto-completing, but not sending it. And sending is still up to you. And Grammarly starts correcting your language, but you know maybe you want the grammatical mistake in there because I don't want apostrophe everywhere. You know it's supposed to be. 
Um, so what do you think of that as a paradigm where you actually don't do the task, but help automate 70% of it, but humans actually come, come in to complete it? So that way there's just no risk, but at the same time you automate a lot of the processes in between. So, so, what, so the question is like, we, or comment is like, okay, so you take the machine doing 70% and the machine, the person just, you know, verifies or double check or I mean, is that? Yeah, so basically you take the risk completely out Yeah. because no, nothing gets sent to the customers directly. Mm -hmm. There's no high risk uh, issues there. But at the same time, you get the 70% benefit because machines actually take you all the way there. Yeah, so I, I actually uh, really, really like uh, the scenario that you set up there. Because I think about our sequences today, whether it's inbound or outbound, and they're defined and framed, and we work a, a prospect you know, through that sequence. And at any point in time, they may engage differently with our content, with our organization, with a you know, field event. That's not known to that sequence. It may not be known to that SDR unless they're really monitoring all of the, you know, activities from the, you know, we, we've got Marketo, so we see, a you know, the interesting moments and in the, in the different engagement. But that takes a lot of time and effort for each contact that you're working, you know, every day, right? There's, there's hundreds in a week that an individual SDR is working. So, um, so one, that's one element um, in being able to pull that information together and make the recommendation of a different next touch than the canned you know, prescriptive one that's in the sequence that, that they're following per the, you know, the playbook. I think the other aspect of that is the human nature to want to control things. Um, and that's probably where most of the friction within an organization, especially um, from an account executive perspective, there's account executive personas that don't want to let the SDR touch any of their accounts, right? So you, now you introduce AI touching their accounts, you know, with automation, and they're really freaked out about it, right? Um, so I think um, giving the recommendation of what to do next um, opens up um, the control, you know, kind of soothes, put some salve on that, that, that control issue, as well as um, takes into consideration all of the things that have happened since the last touch um, so that it, you can be more thoughtful, more relevant and more real um, with the prospect as you're reaching out to them. The one thing I'll mention, too, is obviously the more data you have, the more certain you can have making those suggestions. Each time you click on that suggestion, uh, then you're reinforcing that model. So, I mean, it, it may be a matter of time until some of that stuff that we are approving as humans starts to become more automated. You become confident in it, right? right? right. Um, because it cr produces the results. So you gain confidence in what's being recommended, and then you're more likely to allow more automation. And it becomes more confident in itself. Yeah. Yeah. I think also that, like, you know, the market's getting more aware of prospecting techniques. I think, you know, saying somebody's school that they went to and the team that they root for in an, in an outbound email is like, you know, not, it's not enough. It's not enough, guys. Um, it's, it's, on, it's almost a race to see who can be more, more human in their outbound out, outreach. And I think that leaves a lot of space to automate what can be automated, like on the back end, to, to help those humans understand, okay, this is where, go, be, this is where the human applies, go be human. And, um, I think that's the future. Great. So we're more than out of time. So I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you coming here, the respectful, respective uh, panel. So thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for, uh, for listening and joining us today.